Hey everyone, welcome to the final segment of the DIY robotics course with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. In this final segment, I'll be walking you through the program which will allow us to control the robots remotely and also enable obstacle avoidance. I'll also be showing you how to run the system remotely without the need to connect to your computer and then we will be able to connect and control the device from a distance with a laptop or smartphone on your local network, which is pretty cool. So join me now where we bring everything we've learned up to this point together and do not forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel before we start as always that would mean a lot to me and let's jump into discussing the final code we'll be uploading to the raspberry pi pico w okay so jumping into the final program we'll be running today on a raspberry pi pico w to enable the remote control we'll just be connecting to our device again once more in thani and we'll be writing this python file once again all the code will be provided to you for free on shillatech.com in the link down below if you do not feel like copying we're just gonna go over this code at a high level so once more connect to your pico w in thani and we just want to make a python file and one thing important about this python file is right now it is in my directory for my project but really once we are done with the coding of this file we want to move all the code to the main.py file on the home directory of your pico w because this is the file your device tries to run when it turns on so once our device is not plugged into our computer anymore and we don't have this play button what's going to happen is as soon as we turn the pico w on it's going to run the main.py file and that's why we want this program to be in the main.py file once we are done and we also want the neopixel.py file to be in the main directory as well so we have access to that library so just keep that in mind once you are done programming it in your folder if you are using a, a folder like i am you just want to move it back to the main.py file so in this program what we're doing is we have some imports here and then the first things first, we have to connect to the Wi-Fi and we want to use the same Wi-Fi we're using on our local devices, such as our computer or phone. Otherwise, we won't be able to connect to this device. So we're going to pass in our Wi-Fi name and password. Now, I just saved my password in a config file. You don't have to do this. Really, you could just delete this. You can delete the import here and you could just hard code your Internet password. I just obfuscated my password for protection purposes. And then we have a pretty pretty standard code block here where we connect to the internet. If you have used the Pico W4, Pico 2W, this is a very standard code block. Then we just have a helper function to get the distance. We went over this in the previous segment. This is just to measure distance from the HCSR04. So I'm not gonna go into that. Just watch the previous video if you are, if you want more detail. And then also what we went over in the, in the previous video, we have this code that changes the color of the HCSR04 with RGB because remember we are using HCSR04 with RGB module and one if statement I added here is this blue color so sometimes if this device temporarily disconnects if you're using jumper wires instead of the five JST connector which I recommended I'm using jumper wires sadly what happen is the distance may turn negative for a brief moment and we'll just show the color as blue so that is an edge case we want to deal with so I added that if Otherwise, it just changes the color to red if it's close, yellow if it's mildly close, and green otherwise. Next, we just have some motor helper functions. So we also went over this in a previous segment of this tutorial series. So just standard code here, helper function code to control the speed and direction of the motors. We define an emergency stop here. So this is a global state for emergency stop. So if emergency stop becomes true, that is the distance is less than 10 centimeters, it won't allow the robot to go forward. So we're just initializing that state here. Next, we have a web page. So this is just an HTML web page. And there's a lot going on in this web page. I'm not gonna go into the HTML pretty much at all, but just know I just designed the HTML to have some simple buttons. That is, you can control the speed and you can control some simple directions such as forward, left, right, backward, and that sort of thing has a Shillatech logo. And I leave it up to you to design the HTML if you like it to be more fancy. I just kept it as simple and clean as possible for this tutorial series sake. And so that is just pretty much HTML. And we just we just segregate that in a separate function for cleanliness of the code. Once we define the HTML, we're just going to define this asynchronous function that is measure distance task. And this task is actually, or this function is incredibly important because what happens in this function, it's continuously running as the web server is running. So it's running asynchronously in the background and it's measuring the distance. And if the distance is under a certain, that is 10 centimeters, we're going to cut the motors. And that, that has to be if the robot is forward. So the program will not let you move the robot forward anymore if you are 10 centimeters and if the distance is positive. So that does account for the case where the HCSR04 does sometimes disconnect in edge cases if it's not connected well. And so that pretty much is the obstacle avoidance function right here. 
And of course you can change this distance as you like. If you think 10 centimeters is too much or too little, go ahead and play with that. Next we have handle client. So this just ha handles inputs from the clients in the web server. So, you know, the client can control the speed. So it looks for that. And the client can also control the direction. So that is forward, backward, left, right, just standard things there. And it returns an HTTP response. And then on the bottom here, pretty much we just have functions to run this pro these processes. So we, we run the measure distance task and we also run the web server, which we defined here in an asynchronous function. And then we just continuously keep that going. And that is our program at a high level. Okay, so now that our program is ready and we have our internet name and password in, we can go ahead and run our program. And the first thing the program will do is it'll spit out your IP address. And that's what we need to connect to in the browser. So we're going to run it. You see my IP address is right here. Yours might be different. You can go ahead and copy that value. So 192.168.4.50. So go ahead and click enter. It looks like it is good. And we have the interface now. So I have the device in front of me. I hope you can see this. And let's just do a simple test. So we can set the speed to 175. And let's go ahead and do forward. So it looks like it's moving forward and backward and those speeds. And if, if I try to click forward as it's close to my computer, it won't let me. So you can see it's moving forward. But if I go ahead and put it close to something, it stops, it cuts off the motors, but I could still click backwards as it's close to something. So it looks like everything is good to go and our program is ready to be moved to the main.py file and to be tested remotely. Okay, so now that we verified the program is running, we can go ahead and move the program to the main.py on the home directory of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. If you do not have that file, you can go ahead and make it. One thing I added briefly in the meantime is some simple code here. So I actually added a new line of code offline here because I was testing something and I thought it was important to add this. So I just added the initiation of the onboard LED of the Pico W. And then if we go scroll all the way down, I just added a, a small block of code here that turns the onboard LED on and off once the program is running. Because I realized once we have this thing unplugged from Thani and it's running standalone. There's no indicator visually if the Pico W is working properly. So I decided to add the LED turning on and off. And that is an indicator if the program is actually running. So that's just good. And of course, the updated code for this is on shillatech.com in the blog section. So we could just take this whole code and we can go ahead and paste it in the main.py. I already did. And we can just save it. And of course, make sure your neopixel.py is also in the root directory of your Raspberry Pi. And once we have that, we can just go ahead and unplug our Raspberry Pi. And then once that is done, we can go ahead and test it. So let me go ahead and plug it as you see here. So it's unplugged. And now once we turn on and off the Raspberry Pi Pico W, it should start blinking that onboard LED. One thing I want you to make note of is sometimes it is a little buggy initially. So just give it time to actually boot up and to run the program for some time before you access it for remote access. Okay, so it looks like the program is running now. You see it's no longer attached to my computer. It's just attached to my battery supply, as you see here. And that is connected to the MB102. And my MB102 is powered on. You can power it on by clicking on and off this button. And yeah, it looks like the Pico W is looking good. So we can go back to the browser. We can see that it's going to be rendered. So I'll go ahead and click enter here. And you see that the interface is available. And now that we confirmed it's working completely remotely, let's go give it one last test and verify that it works as expected. Okay, so it looks like it's in front of me now. So let me go ahead and just run some simple commands. So let's move forward, backward, left, forward, right. And then we could change, change the speed. So I'll just change it to 100. Same thing. Looks like it's moving fast. And we'll try to get to the wall there to, to show the obstacle avoidance. So let's move back. Let's move back again. Let's move forward now. And we'll see that if we try to move forward, you see it stopped at the wall right there. So that's pretty cool. We can just go ahead and move backwards. So it looks like everything is working as expected with this robot. It's a little finicky at first. I mean, I leave it up to you to robustify this program as much as you like. To take it a step further, obviously there's a lot that can be improved in this program. But overall, pretty cool. I mean, we are moving the robot completely remotely just from these commands on my computer. And of course, you can do the same thing on your phone. So congrats on your remote control robots. So that sums it up for this tutorial series. Congratulations for making it this far and completing your remote control DIY robots with the Raspberry Pi Pico W with obstacle avoidance. We learned so much in this tutorial series. We learned how to write our first program in MicroPython. We assembled a full robot from scratch. We learned how to use motors on the robot. We learned how to implement obstacle avoidance with the HCSR04 sensor. And finally, we brought it all together to write our remote control interface all within a very short period of time.
If you learned something new or simply enjoyed the course and the channel, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below or if you have any suggestions. Thanks, everyone, for sticking with me, and I will see you next time.